Zero seconds. Hello, everybody. Uh, so <clears throat> I want to start this uh, and do a live broadcast, and hopefully it's using the right damn camera. Uh, I'm using my iPad, which does not tell you when going live what camera you're using. So you're either looking at a plant or you're looking at sort of me. I don't know. Uh, and it's dark, probably. So, <laughs> But this is for the blind. It's not really for video, so hey. Uh, I'm using YouTube because I think that's going to be the easiest vehicle to use for everyone to access. Um, when looking out there, Ana G had her website uh, for a while that was live about Android. Um, there's not a lot of resources. Um, there's eyes free, but there's there's a few podcasts here and there. But um, I wanted to put something together each week where we looked at stuff, uh, either the the Galaxy Watch or uh, the Samsung phone that I have, uh, talk about ups and downs of Android, talk, talk about why I switched from iOS, kind of hit everything where we're not dealing with a time limit where I can just go and <clears throat> dive into issues deeper. Um, so a few, few things out of the, the gate here. Uh, one reason I switched from iOS was because it was just becoming stale. It was, it was the same old, same old all the time. So um, you know, you get the new iPhone every year and it just felt like Apple kept taking away and it's like little things that just piled up for me. Uh, for example, this year they didn't, they didn't, uh, include the dongle on the, in the box for the headphone jack. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a $9 thing, but it, it, it's just little things like that that just started to drive me nuts about Apple and they're still not offering power charging. I'm sorry for your iPhone XS Max or 10XS Max, whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, 10S Max, uh, 512 gigabyte, it's $1,400 and you're not going to have fast charging, you're going to make people go buy a dongle and then and then uh, to be able to fast charge or even if you want to connect it to your Mac, you're buying a $1,400 Mac and a $1,400 iPhone and, and now you have to go buy a USB-C to Lightning dongle. It just makes no sense to me what they're doing. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm tired of it. Like, I'm, I just got to a point where I'm like, you know, I like Apple. I like what they do for accessibility. I think they're great. But I'm just, I can't, I just can't deal with this stuff anymore. Um, so I, uh, Zero watching now. Zero likes. I, I decided that I would go to Android and try out the Galaxy. And uh, the one reason I chose the Galaxy was that it has two screen readers. So by default, if you, we talked about this a little bit on one of my short videos, but I wanna alliterate it again here. If you go into a T-Mobile store, AT&T store, Vodafone overseas, you know, wherever you, wherever you go, uh, and hold the volume up and down keys on a Samsung phone, it's gonna turn on voice assistant. Voice assistant is a little bit different than talkback. So there are gestures that work with voice assistant that do not work with talkback. Um, Samsung made voice assistant off of a, basically they took some talkback code, but then they made it their own in, in ways as well. So this is a good end. I think this is a good thing, actually. Uh, I don't really see it being a bad thing to have choice. So on my Samsung phone, I have it set up in accessibility. Um, and we'll cover that on a, di on a different podcast, but, or a different episode or something. But on online and accessibility, I have it set where if I hit, um, volume up and the power button, it toggles voice assistant. So here we go. Let me actually turn my phone on. That might probably be a good idea. Uh, all right, there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna do power and volume up. So it's now on. Uh, I'm gonna do it again and it's off. Now I can also hold down the volume uh, up and down keys, which is the normal um, way of turning on accessibility like TalkBack or Voice Assistant and that will actually run TalkBack. So I could, now I can only run one at one time so if one is on it'll turn it itself off and turn on the other one uh, for whichever toggle I choose which is nice. Um, so let me do that with TalkBack real quick and uh, turn it on. There we go. And now I have TalkBack. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and turn off TalkBack. I'm going to just do the power up and volume up key, or power on and volume up key. And now we have voice system on. So that, so 
as I so what I'm doing here is I'm doing a three finger swipe left and right, and that's going to give me my rotor settings. And what I like is these are customizable, just like um, what like what you would see in iOS. You can choose kind of what you want to have. So in mine, I have dark mode, I have volume, speech rate, and notification center. Uh, so I'm going to turn down the speech here. Uh, actually, I'm turning on the volume, but I'm going to leave that alone. All right. So I'm swiping left and right again with my three fingers. Now I'm going to swipe down. I'm going to slow the speech down. Um, so now, um, one thing I like is you can also choose your uh, different speech um, synthesizer. So I have Eloquence. Um, there, there's other ones like Acapella. Um, I haven't really honestly looked past those two, <laughs> but I think there are a few other ones you can choose from as well. Um, and basically what you do is just you can uh, get the Eloquence app. It's made by Code Factory. I think it's like 20 bucks, and you install it, and then you can set that as your default speech engine, um, and that's then what Voice Assistant uses. And then you can, and we'll look at the settings here. Uh, we'll, we'll actually, let's go ahead and do that now. So... I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over to the notification center with the three fingers. I'm gonna swipe up. So here is in your notifications. So it's gonna be a little different than what you're seeing if you're coming from iOS. So we're gonna have at the top the time and the date. And then Wi-Fi is off. I'm gonna turn Wi-Fi on. There's sound. And if I double tap that, it goes to vibrate, mute. And then sound. And then Bluetooth is on. I'm connected to my watch. And then auto rotate is off. So that would be like if you turn your phone into uh, landscape mode, it would automatically switch into that. I turn mine off, but a flashlight that would give us some light in here so you all can see. <laughs> uh, airplane, that's pretty explanatory. Uh, so then we have settings, and then then it, then it goes. If I go past settings here, I'm actually seeing notifications. So I have like a phone call here. So that's telling me my voicemail. That's an at bat notification. But I'm going to go back to settings because that's what we want. So we're going to go in here to settings. Now, one other thing. Voice Assistant has a bunch of noises that it makes. Um, if you've listened to Jonathan Mosen's podcast on the Galaxy, you can hear it in the beginning. I, I turn the noises off. They Now, I do let mine vibrate. So every time I flick or touch the screen... It is providing me some haptic feedback as I move around the screen. Um, I like that personally. Some people don't. They turn off both haptic and, or both vibration and uh, uh, sounds. I do leave the vibration on, but turn the sounds off. The sounds, they, it's just too much. It's too jingly. It's like beep, 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 beep every time you move around. Uh, we could play with that if that's, it, leave me comments or tell me if you wanted me to put those on, because we can and you can hear what it sounds like out of the box. Uh, I'm just I'm just going off of how I like it and then just showing you stuff from that point at this point. So, uh, so we're going to go to accessibility. And we have vision, so I'm going to click on that. So this is a voice assistant help where you can actually go in and play with the gestures so you can actually learn uh, what, you can actually practice the gestures there and I think there's a tutorial. And here's here's dark screen. So this is um, rapid key input. So basically, you would you would t find the key you want and then lift your finger. So I that's the way I prefer to type. It's a voice label, so you can actually uh, actually use the camera and and do a label and have it say whatever you. Uh, you would actually use an NFC tag, and then uh, once you scan that tag, it would play your voice recording back. Font and zoom. The rest of that's for low vision. So we're going to go up here. Uh, so we have text to speech. 
Texas Let's go into text to speech real quick. So much like I had um, the uh, in the rotor, I have some of the same settings here. So we settings, we have language, language settings, speech rate, pitch, and then reset and you could play with that slider, there. Slider, now. I have preferred engines eloquence. Settings, now I'm going to go into settings here because I want to show you this. Um, so in here, you can actually set it to do different things. So like right now, I have mine where if I'm playing music from like, let's say, tune-in radio, um, voice assistant is going to duck the audio and talk over that. But you can change that if you want. You can. It's fully customizable here. So I'm going to swipe right. Yeah, voice profile. You could check any one of these. I have that selected. Process punctuation, checkbox, not select, punctuation, disabled, use number processing, check number processing, use abbreviations, information pauses, checkbox, advanced, force language, selected, language, disabled, sampling rate. So, audio optimization. Let's turn on sampling, let's go to sampling rate, because I think you'll get to hear the difference here. So, I have 11 and 16, I'm going to change it to 16. I'm on 11 right now. See how that changed the. Audio optimization. User diction, audio optimization. Show Change the sound a little bit. I'm going to go back to 11. It's a little bit, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit easier to hear. I hit the damn Bigsby button. <laughs> Get back there. There we go. All right. So now, there's audio optimization as well. And that's going to, he you'll hear this one here. So, I have mine on balanced, but you can do that for quality. Can't really hear a difference there. It's a little lower. That's volume. <laughs> you can tell a huge difference. So I'm going to go back to balance. And there we go. Um, so as I was talking about in some of the private, the, the smaller five-minute videos, you have on the bottom of the screen on Android, uh, this is typically what you would see. You'll have what's called soft buttons. So you can't feel anything. But the screen has a back, home, and recents uh, buttons always there, so you can you can double tap on them and interact with them with talk back or voice assistant, and um, and and move around however you know you need to. So I just hit the home button there and went home, and then I locked my screen. Um, so I think finishing up this first podcast. So what what do I want to do? I want to. Uh, I want this to kind of be a place where, you know, ideas are shared. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to bring to the table some apps each week and show you, um, and, and I'm going to talk about and go head to head. Um, I was a eight year iOS user. I used tons of these apps on iOS and I'm going to be honest and tell you, uh, good things and bad things about the apps. So I'm going to talk about uh, this is how the app was on iOS when I left. And I still have my iPad, but I don't, I, I'm honestly not using it much. And I'm frustrated because I have the Apple Smart Keyboard and iOS 12, for some reason, a lot of the time, I have to restart the damn thing to get it to type. It doesn't want uh, to register key presses. I can hear it go, tonk, you know, ding, 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 like it's trying to, but the keys aren't typing. And Quick Nav is off. I have no idea what is going on. My focus is in the box. And then when I restart it, it's fine. It just needs to restart every so often now. It, it, it's annoying. But anyway, <laughs> it's like every day. Uh, but, but anyway, um, so I, I would go over an app and tell you what I thought in iOS and tell you what I thought in Android. I'm going to do this one here. I'm doing a free subscription, so I want to do it while I have it. Um, 
And some people may be interested in this, some people may not. It's called The Athletic. It's a uh, sports magazine. And I, I, I used to use it on iOS and it was semi-accessible. It's gotten better. Um, but about the third or fourth article on iOS, <clears throat> as you're reading, um, it would crash. It does not do that on iOS. On Android. The other thing that's kind of cool, I'm going to show you. So I'm opening this up here. So it says The Athletic. So then it's going to give me a story at the top here. Uh, so if I just touch the, if I touch at the top. So this is a Green Bay Packers uh, article. And the other thing is, too, for speech, if, if it's too fast, I put it about 40. But if you guys think that's still too fast or unclear or something like that, let me know. We can work on it. Uh, with the iPad, I learned that the microphone is on the camera on the back, so I'm just trying to adjust and, and uh, give you guys the best quality here as, as well as we can. Uh, so, so I'm going to read this article. I'm going to open it up. The Athletic. And Lowry is ready to step up for defensive line. I'm going to swipe. Tino. One hour ago, Green Bay, Wisconsin. When New Packers defensive coordinator Mike Pettine arrived at Green Bay this offseason, along with prize disciple Muhammad Wilkerson, defensive lineman Dean Lowry took a back seat. It was a role Lowry embraced. Last season, he played in 16 games with 11 starts, compiling 32 total tackles and two sacks. This season, Lowry played 33 of 143 defensive snaps, 23.1% during Green Bay's first two games against Chicago and Minnesota, before getting 24 defensive snaps at Washington in Week 3, when Wilkerson suffered a season-ending ankle injury. You hate to see that happen to a teammate injury suck, Lowry said, but everyone has to stay ready for their opportunity. I've been ready for mine. When Wilkerson went down, Pettine played only two linemen, Mike Daniels and Kenny Clark, on the first two snaps. It wasn't until the Redskins were situated at their own three-yard line that Lowry stepped in. He immediately was greeted by a double team from Redskins right tackle tied second right guard Brandon Scherf. On the following play, defensive lineman Montrevious Adams entered and was part of a four-man front with outside linebackers Nick Perry and Clay Matthews on the edges. The result, Redskins running back Adrian Peterson scored on the two-yard touchdown run. Packers inside linebacker and defensive communicator Blake Martinez used both of those plays as teaching moments. Last game talking to them, it was just communication. Life, hey, just make sure you stay in your cap. I could play off of you and we could play that much. I'm going to do a two-finger double tap here to pause. Guy got a good jump on the snap. There are ways for him to counter that. There we go. I'll just swipe. <laughs> so you get the idea. What I like about this app, though, is they're always like that. It just reads right through it, and there's no advertisements. Of course, you do pay for this app. It's, uh, I think, like 50 bucks for the year or something. Button, I haven't decided if I'm going to do it yet. There's a few unlabeled buttons here button, at the bottom, button, and what I th button, think they are, because I've actually... Unlabeled. To comment. Zero. And one that says zero is where you can actually Double go in and read. Activate. You can actually go in and read comments. Button, button, uh, button, and then the three buttons button, beside button, it, or the four button, buttons button. beside it, I have no idea what the hell they do. No idea. So I don't the interact button. with them. Uh, but let's, ready to step up for line. So here's the, the same thing we read. I'm going to double tap and hold on this. Long rest. Bookmark. It, okay, so I can bookmark. bookmark. Mark is red. Mark is red. Mark is red. Last item. Bookmark. And then I guess that's it. Okay. So. Back button. Nothing too exciting in there, but uh, I'm gonna click on this J.R. Smith article. J.R. Smith wrote a children's book. We are not kidding. Here's why it's good. Joe Barton, four hours ago, independent Ohio J.R. Smith wrote a children's book. Stop you stone cold, doesn't it? In the past eight months, J.R. Smith pleaded guilty to a reckless driving charge through a bowl of soup with a Cavaliers assistant coach, infamously for the score at the end of regulation of a tight game one of the finals with the ball in his hands, and was accused of taking a fan's phone and throwing it into a construction site late one night in New York. He also co wrote a children's book with his brother Chris called Hoop Smith. J.R. and Chris learned teamwork. The athletic was for a back button. So, so again, you get the idea, but um, it does a really awesome job reading it. In fact, I like it much more than on iOS because um, on iOS, you actually, to, to read the article a lot of the time, you have to use their own, you have to hit a play with speech button. And it uses uh, Tom's voice uh, that you get on iOS. And it works pretty well, but uh, this is much nicer. It's a much more polished interface. I mean, not everything works, but I mean, I'm sure as you get to know the app, you could probably label the buttons. I'd also try to run it with TalkBack. Uh, and that's another thing I'm gonna do too is, on some of these apps, I'm gonna show you voice assistance weak points and show you where I turn on TalkBack. The only difference, uh, talk, TalkBack really didn't tell me anything different on this app in particular that voice assistant did, so that's why I'm not doing it here. Um, but I really like this app for the simplicity of, I can open up, uh, me and Ken, a uh, guy I work with, we're talking about this, we wanted a news app where you can just open it up, hear the story, not hear a bunch of fluff. And I'm willing to pay for that. And I don't know if this app hits it right on the head. I got to debate if it gives me enough of the news I want, though, like sporting stuff. 
It's kind of neat, though. Um, so it's called The Athletic. Uh, and before I go, I want to talk briefly uh, about phone choice. So if you go to Android, you have a lot of phone choices. I mean, and a lot of different price points. So I think being a smart consumer on Android is a great idea. You, you should research what it is you want out of a phone. So for me, when I left, one of the things that I really, really wanted was wireless charging. Uh, so that ruled out the Pixel because Pixel doesn't have wireless charging. I, I really think that's a necessity. It needs to have it. Uh, it's, it's a feature I use and I want to, I want to, I, I just wanted that. I didn't want to sacrifice that. Um, but for you, it may not be that it might be, um, the headphone jack, <laughs> you know, so it might, maybe you don't want a headphone jack. So, I mean, ultimately you need to figure out what it is you want from the phone. The second thing is be a savvy person, meaning no what Android version is current. Uh, so me and my wife walked into the AT&T store, and this is, I swear to God, this is a true story, two weeks ago. And she really wanted to look at um, LG phones. Uh, she she knew someone that had an LG phone. They showed it to her, and so she's like, you know what, I really kind of want to look at these. So we, we made a special trip out to AT&T. We walk in. They show us the flagship LG phone. I don't even know what model it was, to be honest. I wish I did because I'd look it up and see if the guy was lying or if he just didn't know what he was talking about. So she brings up TalkBack by holding the volume uh, up and down key simultaneously, turns it on. And so I'm talking to the guy. I said, you know, what, what version of Android is this running? And he goes, KitKat. And I just laugh. I mean, because we're on Ori. We're actually on Pi if you're going by the Android, Android standard. So Pi is the newest one that Google has on the Pixel series. I'm actually running Oreo because Samsung's behind, but you know, uh, we'll talk about that in a, in a second here. But, but um, so, and I, I just started laughing. I'm like, the phone was $800. It's running KitKat, he told me. And I said, I just started laughing. Goes, well, it's updatable to Lollipop. And I'm like, <laughs> and I just went, that's better <laughs> somehow. Like that's, that makes it better that it can upgrade to one version that's still, you know, four versions behind or whatever, you know. So just be a savvy consumer because why, why would you spend $800 on a phone that's not running the current, the current version? You can get online and eBay and find something way, 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 way less than that that's running that version if you really want that, you know. So just just don't don't make a quick dis don't don't walk from a phone store and and buy a phone quote unquote blind so to speak so um that's that's something i'd advise you not to do um the reason I, so a lot of people that i work with said you know if you're going to go android you should you should go stock android you want to go with uh, you know like the pixel me personally I, I don't have anything wrong with stock android but i don't you know, I'm so new to Android now, it doesn't matter if I'd be on Pi or if I'd be on Nugget, in a sense, because I'm still, I'm learning a lot about the setting screens. There are, I showed you briefly some of the settings in here. There is, no, like on iOS, I can pretty much memorize the setting screens. There is no way in heck I can remember any of these setting screens here. And, and not to top it all off, but their settings just randomly placed, you know, in an app or somewhere else. And it's just, you, so my point is, is for me, it didn't matter if I was on stock Android. The other thing is Samsung, I've uh, been reading um, forums and stuff. Samsung actually mods their phones and, you know, kind of makes it somewhat Samsung-y, <laughs> uh, if that's a term. And, and so, like, even though I'm running 8.0, I have some features of 8.1 on the phone. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know. It, does it really matter? I mean, who knows? Um, you know, long-term. Android, Google is supporting their, their flagships for three years. Samsung's doing about the same. So, I mean, ultimately, I don't think it matters, personally. Uh, I mean, unless you just have to have Pi when Pi comes out. If you're that kind of person, then I think then you would want to go stock Android. Otherwise, I don't I don't know that it matters. Um, the, the biggest thing you want to make sure is is the phone carrier giving you security updates. That's that's the question you want to ask. Um, so um, those are pieces of advice. Hopefully, you take. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I also bought a Galaxy Watch recently, so I sold completely out of Apple, uh, except for the iPad. I got rid of my my Apple Watch and my iPhone, and I I I honestly, my my wife today asked me, "Do you regret it at all?" And and the honest answer to that is no. I mean, I I'm having a lot of fun with the Samsung phone. Um, battery life is actually I think better than my A plus, which is weird for me to say that. But it, it like I'll come home and I'll still have forty five percent battery, uh, maybe maybe forty percent. Where before um, I had probably about thirty five to thirty. Um, now is it quite the same comparison? Probably not, um, because uh, you know I'm I'm not necessarily on it as much because I, I don't do we have we have a lot of we have a lot of apps that we're testing iOS wise. We're not quite there yet Android wise that'll be coming. So, I mean, to be fair, maybe I'm not using it as much. So, um, but I, there's not, uh, I've been lost. Uh, <laughs> I got let off at the wrong stop on the bus and I started to panic and then I pulled up nearby Explorer on Android and was able to find my way, you know, where I need to go. Um, you know, and, and, and I thought, cause those are the moments, you know, if you made a mistake because, if you're if you ever get lost somewhere, the first thing you do is panic, and nothing technology doesn't work right. You know you're you're tapping on your screen and you're you're hitting the lock button frantically, and you're like, why doesn't this help me? Where I need to go? And uh, <laughs> so uh, the fact that I was able to correct myself and 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 do the things I needed to do tells me that I'm comfortable enough with Android already that it's going to be fine. I think this is going to be a good switch. I'm, I'm feeling pretty positive about everything. And uh, I hope that we can educate each other as this grows. Um, and feel free to ask me any iOS, Android questions that you may have. Um, and uh, I think for now, I'm gonna end this. And, and I wanna make this probably a once a week thing where I just get on, talk for a half hour or something like that, uh, show off an app, uh, talk about some setting screens, um, you know, let you hear what voice assistant sounds like, let you hear what talk back sounds like, and uh, we'll, we'll see that where this goes. Um, and, and thank you to the guys that have helped me out along the way on learning Apple over the years. You know, David Woodbridge and Michael Loth and, um, you know, J uh, Joe Steinkamp and JJ and, and just all the people uh, that I've listened to over the years give tech advice because I... I tell you what, those guys have been been there many a years and have lots of knowledge. And um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, Joe uh, uh, um, Steinkamp and I, uh, I met him at CSUN, and, and um, we were talking about um, uh, well, so so Joe every year during the Apple event always kind of just gets real snarky about, you know, Apple and, you know, how they make a big to-do. And it used to always make me mad because I was kind of on the, on the Apple side. But now I understand. It's like, you know, these phones that they're releasing, I mean, if, if you have a 10 or even an 8, I, I, I don't know of one compelling reason to update, you know. And, and that's so weird to say, but, I mean, I don't really, you know, the 8 has the same processor as, processor as the 10, uh, the 10s is a little bit faster, but I mean, you know, most people aren't going to use that, or aren't going to notice a difference, you know. So I, I don't know. I just I felt like I wanted to switch to a company that you know, and 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 arguably you could say the same about Galaxy. I mean, you know, when I was reading the specs and reading what people were saying, they were like the seven and eight, nine. The only difference really is the processor. I don't. I haven't been here over here long enough to know, but I mean, ultimately, what more can we do with the phone? I mean, I think. It's going to have to be. I, I I feel like Samsung is pushing the boundaries a little bit. We where you're hearing about the foldable displays and different things. We'll see where the technology takes us. But I I just I couldn't keep going with Apple where they're raising the prices and lowering what you're getting in the box and just being cheap all around. Um, and I, I just I just didn't you know I think the iPhone is a great phone. I just I I needed something different so. Let's do this journey, and uh, we will uh, learn a lot together. Twenty-nine minutes, forty-five minutes. Twenty-nine minutes. Zero watching now. Finish. Switch camera. Finish. Button. Finish. Alert. Are you sure you want to stop streaming? Are you sure you want to cancel? Button. End.